Hey guys, Dave here. Thanks for checking out my channel. Please like and subscribe. And today I'm going to show you how you can build this really cool stand-up garden bench. I made one for my father-in-law. He had a hard time bending over and working on the ground and I thought, build him a bench? It worked out great. So I sat down and decided to set up the plans to make this myself and to teach you. Hope you enjoy. It's a beautiful spring day here in Minnesota and I thought I'd have enough time to get started on my stand-up garden box. I went to Home Depot and I got the necessary wood. Three four by fours that are six foot long. I'm gonna end up cutting those all in half, uh, getting the exact measurement down I'll mention later, and having those be the four legs on the, uh, as well as the cross piece on the top. Uh, one two by four, which is gonna go underneath in the center to hold up all of the tubs. And finally, two two by sixes that are 10 foot long that are gonna be the outside frame of the garden box. I saw quite a few other videos being made on YouTube for these stand-up garden benches. Uh, I took some of their ideas, but I drew up my own plans. Uh, so I've got my plans drawn up here, some sketches. Uh, I will put links to these in the description. Also, I'll you know, put a scan up so you can take a look at these up close. It's just my quick drawing to show what I'm going to make here. Um, I'm going to cut some of this stuff inside in my shop, some of it right out here. Uh, so you won't see everything being made, but you'll see it come together. I'll make sure you know how to do it All right, here's the detailed drawing the top view and the side view of the table uh, If you need to see these measurements or anything go ahead and hit pause uh, This next part is the end view of the table and the material list what you'd need to buy if you were making one table and Finally this last one is the actual cut list how long each piece of wood is and what you should cut it at First thing I'm going to do is cut the 2x10s down to their size. Based on my uh, measurements here, it's going to be 77 inches long for the long side and 33 inches for the short way. So I'll go get those cut. All right, I got the 2x6s cut out, 77 inches on the long ones, 33 inches on the short ones, and I obviously cut one of each out of the long board. That way I had very minimal scrap, just a little, I think it was a 10 or 11 piece, uh, inch piece left over. So that was the way to maximize the wood there. I'm now gonna cut up the four by fours. They are either gonna be 34 inches long, if they're the legs, or 33 inches long, if it's their cross parts. And then the two by four, when I cut that one, that's gonna be the support that goes underneath the tubs all the way across. And that is gonna go, um, four inches less than 77 so it'll be 73 inches long to go across underneath everything and then two 11 inch pieces on the ends that are going to support it so uh 73 long 11 inch on the other pieces we'll have all very little uh scrap on that one all right i got it all cut out pretty happy this is all the scrap there was for the entire load so you can buy your uh, lumber according to what my size is for you'll have very little waste and what I've got here are the two 33 inch long cross pieces, the four legs, the two down supports and the cross support on the two by four, the two ends that were the two by six and the two long parts of the two by six. So I got all the rough cutting down, we're all set ready to start figuring out how to put it all together. And the most difficult challenge is gonna be cutting the four by four legs. So let's get to that now. All right, so this is the uh, the end of the 4x4 where we're going to be cutting out where the 2x6 has come on it. And um, the 2x6 is, of course, 5.5 inches, so I'm going to measure 5.5 inches down. Draw my line across here. All right, and the way that we're going to do this here, a 2x6 is going to be going this way, and that's going to go the whole way. The one, The other one coming this way because of the way that we have the, uh, the joints coming together, actually this is on the inside, we want that. So we're gonna be laying our cut line here. So, half inch over here, one and a half inches, one and a half inches is right about here. A little off on my measurement there. That's okay, and then draw it down here. So, I now know that I'm gonna be cutting this entire section away. And then here, inch and a half going up this way, which is right there. All right, and going over. So now I'm gonna be cutting all this away. So the part that's gonna be left is this little two by eight, two inch square. And of course the down way we're going is five and a half inches. 
I'm gonna get my circle saw out and get ready to do it. All right, when, when setting up the uh, circle saw for this first cut, I'm gonna have it go as basically as deep as it can go into the uh, into the piece. Looks like I got it maxed up right there. And I'm gonna cut on this top side right here. So this is the part I'm gonna save. I'm gonna cut deep as I can here, down the line, and then stopping at that five and a quarter. I'm then gonna roll it to the good side here and cut there down to five and a quarter all the way along uh, to get maximum depth. After that, I'm gonna rotate it and set it to one and a half inch depth to cut the sides off. Here we go. And a good idea to clamp it down to be safe. So you can see up close here what I've got set up here. I've cut down to there, I've cut down to there. Now I'm gonna set my saw to do the trims right here at that one and a half inch depth so that it cuts it all off. There we go. All right, now that I've got that uh, this section cut out, I'm going to attempt to uh, pop it out, being careful not to break this side. So I'm just gonna making sure I got all the corners in there. There we go. Looks like there's just a little bit of a corner that stuck. Now we've got one leg done. Now I guess I'll just have to do this uh, a few more times. Okay, well I've got these uh, four legs all trimmed out now, cut down so that's a uh, place for each of the two by sixes going across. Nice strong two by two section right there to, that I'm gonna be able to screw through to hold it all together. I did have to clean up the edges here with my chisel uh, so where the blade didn't quite cut smooth to make sure everything comes together nice. If you have somebody here to help you have them hold it all nice and straight, that's fantastic. I'm out here alone today, so I'm going to be using a clamp and uh, balancing it off on my sawhorses here. Uh, make sure it's all lined up nice and square on the ends. Uh, and I got three inch long screws to hold it in nice and tight. One on the top and then one down below. Get a nice tight grip. All right, there we go. So I've got the two sides put together now. All I need to do is put in the cross pieces. This is where it gets hard if you don't have a helper. Maybe I'll try to go find one. There we go, that's gonna go there, that's gonna go there. Of course, if all my cuts were square, this whole table's gonna be square, but if it's not lined up, you know, that'll be a trouble. AJ, I, uh, I need your help outside for a second. I'm a little busy. Well, um, can I get some help outside? We're kind of busy. Uh, we'll let you know once we make our decision. Well, I couldn't find a helper. All the teenagers were watching TV or playing video games, so I'm pretty much on my own out here. I got this side clamped. I got this side all lined up. All the edges are square. Just got to screw this piece in. The other four by fours is the centerpieces. And on those, we have to make sure that we're leaving 21 inches for each one of the black bins that are gonna be going in here. All right, here we go. I've got a couple of clamps here that I'm balancing this one on. So I'm gonna get the opening to be 21. And of course, it's already gonna be set at 33 and 21. All right. I'm going to 
get both of these started so they're ready to go. All right, I got the two cross braces put in. And uh, it's really starting to take shape. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back and do some sanding and routering to, to kind of clean it up, make it look nice. Let me just check to make sure that the uh, bins are gonna fit in here, right? So they're supported really well on both sides. Fit nice in the holes. All right, the last structural piece is going to be the two by four that runs underneath the bins to support them in the middle. Um, I know that when we get a lot of soil and a lot of rain and water in here, it's gonna sag down a little bit. So I'm gonna be drilling uh, four tiny holes in each bin to let them drain. And I'm also gonna put this piece right here across the bottom, underneath them. And these little end pieces are gonna go right here and support it all the way down. All right, I'm gonna have the two by four running on end like this all the way on supporting it. So to start with, I'm gonna take one of these end braces and just put it right at the bottom, flush at the bottom and get it screwed in tight. And then do the same thing on the other side and then lift it up to see how it fits into here. All right, same thing on the other side. Okay, I finally got this thing clamped up so it's in place right there. And now I'm just gonna determine how high or low it should be based on how low these dishes go. When you put the weight in the tub, it's gonna really sink down I right now have about an inch and a half or so that this is able to sink and I think that's going to be good. So what I have done is the top of this 11 inch support brace is about a quarter of an inch down from the top of the rail here. So making sure it's going to be square, I'm going to put it in right there, hit it with uh, probably four screws into that one, four screws on that end, and uh, we're just about done. And being that these are uh, three inch screws, I'm kind of going in at a slight angle so they don't go through all of the uh, two by four and the two by six. All right, now all that's left to do, clean up the edges, do some sanding, put on the finish. Back today to put some finishing touches on the stand up garden. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna do some sanding with a belt sander and my uh, disc sander just to get it looking nice. And I'm also gonna router to get a nice round edge in all of it. It is an outside workbench type of thing. I guess you wouldn't have to do this, but I like to pay attention to the details. I think it'll look great. Uh, for today, I've got my hearing protection, safety glasses, and because this is a pressure treated cedar tone, I'm gonna be wearing a mask when I do the sanding to make sure none of that dust gets in there to affect it. So time to get started. Well, that worked really well. My main key there was to just get the surfaces all flat so that when I go to router, it gets a nice clean routering edge. So I got my router all set with a quarter inch round over bit. I'm just gonna round over every surface I can find to get a nice curved edge. Now that the routering and sanding is complete on the project, I felt it was time to put on the stain. Some people say they should wait three months or even longer before you put a stain on to treated wood, but I have found with these projects that I've been doing for a year or so now is that the wood accepts the stain very well and it looks great. You cannot really hear me very well because it was super windy in the backyard today, but what I'm explaining is that on the bottom of this plastic bin are five extruded marks in the shape of an X. Four on the corners, one in the middle. They're about a quarter inch, and they're perfect to drill out for drainage for when it's raining or when you water. 
the stand-up garden bench is all done. I have it sitting right here on the side of my house in kind of a temporary spot just so I can show you what this looks like. Very minimalist design. The bins are nice and deep to hold some good quality soil so you can plant your veggies and or flowers. Be a great gift for somebody. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And if you have questions about anything, please let me know down in the comments below. Make sure you read the description. If you are going to make this, I'll be giving you specific details about how much things cost and where you can buy the different items. Thanks guys for watching the channel.